Welcome to the Pesach 2023 message from Two Trees in the Garden of Eden. We had a wonderful Pesach celebration, a couple of believers together, and we came um, for the camp at uh, Broncos Breit this year. And it was very blessed to meet so many people that really follow the path and understand the biblical prophecy that we have in ancient history, in the old books of the prophets Ezra and Nehemiah. Those two men, wonderful men out of the Old Testament that showed us through their lives what it means to come out of um, exile, to be the remnant. And we know that Revelation talks about the remnant of the seed of the woman so much. So to look at the remnant that came out of Babylon in the times of Ezra and Nehemiah and to find instructions and um, good advice and warnings and how to prepare for that which is warned about out of these two old men's life stories, which really represents the kingdom of God's people, their life stories. And that's why the Bible is, it's not just a storybook. It is, a, it is a, um, an amazing, deep mystery. And if you read on one level, you read a beautiful story. And then if you break it open onto the deeper levels, you can find so much information there that is absolutely relevant in our lifetimes today. So um, the Pesach study uh, consists of six sessions. Um, during the Pesach camp, of course, there was a lot of interaction and there was a lot of extra comments that was said. Um, but I will now just record these ses uh, six sessions for you guys so that you can study at your own time these books of Ezra and Nehemiah. So let's first quickly have a look at what these six, uh, six sessions have in store for us. Let's look at the, uh, the background and the outline for these messages. So the books of Ezra and Nehemiah are chronicles of hope and restoration. We are all looking for the restored kingdom of Yahuwah. And these books really tell us about how these uh, exiles from Babylon became a restored kingdom again. The challenges they faced, the problems they faced, um, how they um, interacted with Yahuwah and with their enemies and with each other. So that we can learn our end day exile return as well. Although these books were separate in your Bible, they were originally recorded together. And therefore we will study them as a unit. They tell the history about Yahuwah's remnant people. Remember that key word, the remnant of Yahuwah's people, who had been taken into captivity by the Babylonians after the destruction of Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is the other key word. For any end-day Bible study student, knowing the remnant of the seed of the woman, and this woman is talked about in Genesis 3, and all over Revelation. So we have to understand the remnant of the woman's seed, and we have to understand Jerusalem. Um, so, so this story tells, um, this history tells the story of Yahuwah's remnant who came out of Babylon back to Jerusalem. And they are returning home to the covenant land to rebuild Jerusalem. Because of course, uh, the king of Babylon have totally destroyed Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem, the temple. They've stolen all the holy objects inside the temple. They've destroyed this beautiful land on which David um, established the kingdom of um, uh, the, the kingdom of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. These books confirm the fact that Yahuwah has warned them of their exile due to their unfaithfulness. So how did they come to be in exile? They were unfaithful to Yahuwah. But also to confirm his faithfulness to his covenant. So although we as um, humanity were faithless and unfaithful to God, and we are um, taught about the consequences of that unfaithfulness in these books, this, these books also confirm God's faithfulness to his covenant. We don't deserve God's faithfulness, but God's faithfulness is not for us. It's towards his covenant, towards the promise that he spoke with his mouth that he will never go back on. So that they can be restored after the appointed times. You'll remember that Jeremiah prophesied that um, the kingdom of Judah will be in exile in Babylon for 70 years. So God waited 
well, it's not that God sat around and wait. Um, but the, the appointed times prophesied in the Bible will come to pass. There's nothing that's going to change it. No amount of praying to um, try to twist the arm of God. Bring us out of Babylon sooner. We have repented now. We've learned our lesson. Please, can we just go back home? The appointed times will be done. Just like that. We have to understand the appointed times for the end days. Because God's covenant and His establishment on this earth of that covenant will only happen as it has been prophesied, as it has been written. Through... Um, the story written in ancient times, this um, books of Esra and Yemiah, it's almost about 460 years before Messiah. Through these books, God is still speaking to us the same remnant, the same people who are returning out of his, um, um, returning to his covenant, out of Babylon, mixed religion, to restore the people, the church, back to the kingdom of Yahuwah of which, of course, Jerusalem is the symbol. So an integral part of God's restoration plan is the, and this is extremely important, the reuniting of the two houses. You know, the Jew and the Gentile, the house of Judah, the house of Israel. You remember with two trees, you've learned all about the prodigal son who went and lived in the pigsty and the older brother who stayed home with his father all the years. And of course, Ezekiel 37, the story of the Valley of Dry Bones and the two sticks that comes together. So, so God's final restoration plan is not for an individual. Oh, you know, it's only for you. You are part of the restoration plan, whether you are a Jew or a Gentile. A Jew or a Gentile who comes back to the covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is the kingdom of God, is the remnant and is Jerusalem. So this is what we learn. Let's quickly have a look at the remnant of Yahuwah's people in context of Ezra and Nehemiah. So in the times of Ezra and Nehemiah, there's of course um, only the tribes of Judah and Benjamin who lived in the southern part of Israel that was called the Judean part and they were later called the Jews. So the two tribes, because remember there's 12 tribes, ne? so the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, lived in Judea. They were under King Rehoboam, you know, the son of Solomon, the son of David. And they split the, the 10 northern tribes, the rest of the, of the 10 tribes of the 12 tribes original kingdom, split from Judah and Benjamin. And they moved north to the northern area. So at this time of Judah and Benjamin who lived in Judea, the ten northern tribes has already been exiled by the king of Assyria. And the ten tribes have never returned to the land. Of course, we know that the Jews, you know, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, who lived in Judea and who, who were called the Jews. Not all twelve tribes are Jews. Only two of the twelve tribes are Jews. They were exiled to Babylon and they returned back home. They returned back to Jerusalem. The ten tribes never returned. But in this study today of the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, um, the Jews, the, these two tribes, are symbolic for all of Yahuwah's people who are captive in Babylon. We are not free yet. We don't have the restored kingdom. The kingdom of God has not come yet. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We are praying for that to still happen, and it will only happen when the, the son of David will sit on the throne and rule and reign and he will reunite his two lost um, um, sheepfolds. Um, the, the Bible talks about the virgins, the two virgins. It talks about the two sons. They are so much um, symbology. And when God restores those that broken apart kingdom of his into one nation again with one king rule over them, that is the final restoration. But here in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, we see how the remnant of the Jewish people coming out of Babylon back to Jerusalem, how everything that happened to them and that they went through is beautifully um, explained to us and is a symbology for us for all God's people. So although these two books talks about the Jews, we see the bigger picture in it. And of course, Yahuwah, all of God's people, that Yahuwah, Yah, that, you, 
that Yahuwah calls out of Babylon. This is what these Jews in the books of Esra and Nehemiah are representing for us in this study. If you look at Revelation 18 verse 4 and Jeremiah 51 verse 45, these are two witnesses, one Old, one New Testament. All of God's people are called out of Babylon. So as we follow the story of the Jews, who, whom God called after the 70 years appointed time out of Babylon, back to rebuild his kingdom walls, his Jerusalem walls, then we see the, the bigger picture of all of God's people called out of Babylon. Right, I also, I also told you that Jerusalem is, um, is a very important, the destruction of Jerusalem, returning home to Jerusalem is a very important key factor. And here I just want to prove that for you. Um, Jerusalem is the kingdom of God. And when we talk about Jerusalem um, in biblical prophecy, it doesn't mean, mean that we are talking about Jerusalem right now, where it is in the covenant land right now, and how it is ruled by, <clears throat> at, the, at the top structure, the Bible tells us that um, his wife has become a whore, and she are ruled by the kings of the earth and the rulers of the world who call themselves Jews, but they are not Jews, they are from the synagogue of Satan. So when, when we talk about Jerusalem and the remnant people both in this study, we are not talking about how it is now. We're not talking about the Jews now. We're not talking about Jerusalem now. We're not talking about the temple now. You have to remember that. And this is the big picture from God's perspective down on his whole kingdom, which includes the eternal people, the eternal Jerusalem, the Jerusalem that he loves like a bride. All right. And here I give you lots of um, Bible verses. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, you can just make a note. And if you would like these um, notes, these study notes, I will also have them on the website. So you can just go to www.two trees in the garden of Eden. And uh, this specific study will be first, it's called the preparation for the message, um, the background and the outline. All right, so let's have a look. This, um, the gates of Jerusalem, the gates of the city, for me is amazing. I want to take you through this. So Nehemiah, 20, uh, Nehemiah 12 verse 31. Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall, upon the wall of um, that they are busy rebuilding. And I appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks. This is amazing for me. Already here in the story of Ezra and Yemia, God is showing us again this breaking up of his kingdom. Even in Judah, it's only the, the, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin that's doing all of this. But even in that small um, house of Judah, that's so much smaller than the ten tribes, the house of Israel. Even within that, God is showing us these two um, parts of his kingdom. So they were broke, broken up in two great companies of them that gave thanks, whereof one went on the right hand upon the wall towards the dung gate. So the one part of this group of people went, uh, went towards the right side, went onto the walls towards the right, and they, they started their journey at the dung gate. We know that dung, you know, it's animal dung, it is poop. It is um, something that's unclean. That's where they started. It's called the gate of dung, the dung gate. Now, Nehemiah 12 verse 36. With the musical instruments of David, the man of God, and Ezra, the scribe, before them. So they were giving thanks and they had the musical instruments and they were going upon the, the walls towards the dung gate. And they came to the fountain gate which was over against them. They went up the stairs of the city of David and they, they were going um, at the going up of the wall above the house of David, even unto the water gate eastward. So look at this giving thanks to God. Why? They, they came out of Babylon. 
God's covenant proved to be true. After 70 years, God brought them back from Babylon, from their exile, from their captivity, from their slavery, um, from, from a strange mixed religion land, sun god worship, false religion. God brought them back as he promised them through the mouth of Jeremiah. So they started at the dung gate. You started at a gate where, where everything has gone to that bad word that we are not supposed to say. Everything has gone to dung. But that's where they started. And as they went eastward, important, they went to the right-hand side. You know, Yeshua is the right hand of God. Eastward means we go back east. When we go west, we are in the Western world. We are in, you know, America and Europe and, and the whole Western, Westernized, Hellenized, paganized world. Um, um, spiritually, to go west is to go away from Jerusalem. And to go east is to come back to Jerusalem. And when Yeshua comes, he's, gone, he's not going to come to America or to Europe. He's coming to Jerusalem. So, so spiritually, we must come east. And as the older brother stayed home, he stayed with his father. Yes, we're not talking about Kabbalah. Yes, we're not talking about the Talmudic um, Zohar and Mishnah. Um, we're not talking about the house of Judah. When, when we realize there's a, there's a part of, of the house of Judah that is from the synagogue of Satan, in this study, we, we will come to those Jews. But when we talk about the remnant of the house of Judah that came back to Jerusalem, we're not talking about those Jews that are from the synagogue of Satan. We're talking about a covenant obedient um, people, not the people who has rejected the covenant. Yeshua told the Pharisees, you reject the law of God in order for you to keep your man-made rabbinical traditions. We're not talking about them in this study. The remnant are those, those people who love Yahuwah and who comes back to his covenant. And this group of uh, uh, house of Judah broken in two groups. And this specific group, a part of this group, went towards the right. They went eastward and they started at the down gate. They went past the fountain gate and they stopped at the water gate. Look at this in the spiritual sense. Here you can see um, the, the walls. Um, of um, of Jerusalem, and you can you can do a bit of your own study. It's very interesting. It's beautiful, um, and they started yeah at the dung gate. Here you can see the dung gate, and there's the fountain gate. Um, I can't remember where's the water. I don't think the water gate is shown on this specific picture, but um, absolutely beautiful how they went towards the right, towards the east. And this this is this one group of people. Now the other group of people. Ignore my arrow. They went towards the west. So ignore the arrow. I, I got that wrong. Nehemiah 12, 38. The other company of them that gave thanks went on the opposite side of the first group of people. So they went westward. Remember, this group went eastward towards the right-hand side, starting at the down gate and ending at the water gate. So this other group went over against them. They were on the opposite side, so they went westward. And I went after them, says Nehemiah, and the half of the people upon the wall. So this group was broken in half. <clears throat> and from above the gate of Ephraim. This is now the second group of people. So the first group started at the Dung Gate, you know, the, the, the group that represents the house of Judah. Out of Babylon, everything went to Dung but they ended at the water gate because they came back to the covenant of God. The other group of people, which this, this group in Nehemiah is now representing the 10 lost tribes, the 10 tribes that went to the king of Syria and then were spread into every tribe, nation and tongue, to the four corners of the earth, into every Gentile nation. And today the Gentiles, also called the house of Israel, also called the house of Ephraim, also called the house of Joseph. Do you remember when Joseph went to Egypt? He became Egyptian. His two boys, um, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, were Egyptian. When you looked at them, you couldn't recognize that they originally are Hebrew from the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They looked like Egyptians. 
They even had Egyptian culture and dress code and all those things in them. So the house of Joseph, the house of Ephraim, this is where the second group starts. Isn't it amazing? They start and they're going now towards the West, representing how the Gentiles has gone towards the Western world with their Western religion. But Judah went East towards the original um, faith of God. And that's why the Bible says in um, the last days, 10 men will grab onto the tzitzit of him that is a Jew and say, teach us about your God. So this other group, they started opposite the first group and they started at the gate of Ephraim. They, uh, they started above the old gate. That's where we started our journey. We are, the Bible says, remember to look for the ancient paths, the old ways, and return to the ancient paths. This group going westward is also busy with their return. They are the exiles. They are the remnant of the seed of the woman in Revelation that is coming out of the west um, culture. I'm not talking about geographically. We're not going to all relocating to Israel or Jerusalem now. This is in the spiritual prophetic sense. So, so they started above the old gate at the gate of Ephraim, and then they went above the fish gate. How amazing is that? Doesn't the Bible um, call us fish? Doesn't um, Yeshua say that he will make the disciples fishers of men? Doesn't he say in the book of Jeremiah that he will send many fishers to fish for us? Aren't we represented by the 153 fish that the disciples drew out when Yeshua said, try again, keep on catching. You, you have to get the sons of the living God, 153. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it means you haven't done the Bible study. Um, just Google me. Google two trees in the garden of Eden scripture studies and I'll send you all the information so you can understand what it meant that 153 fish were drawn out when Yeshua told them to try again. So the second group starting um, at the gate of Ephraim above the old gate and then they went above the fish gate at the tower of Hananiel, Hananiel and the tower of Meah and they went all the way unto the sheep gate. Isn't it amazing? Yeshua says, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When Yeshua came, he didn't really come for the house of Judah. Yes, I know it was only the house of Judah in Jerusalem at the time, 2,000 years ago when Yeshua was there. But the house of Judah was made blind so that the true gospel could be preached to the Gentile nations. And that's what Paul tries to explain so beautifully in Romans 11. So Yeshua um, said he's the good shepherd. He's the one who will bring his sheep back home. And all through the book of Isaiah, God says he talks to the false shepherds in the Western world. And he says he will destroy them. He himself will be the, the shepherd for his sheep. So we are the fish. We are the house of Ephraim, the fish and the sheep. And then they stood still at the prison gate. So we are still in prison today. We are in exile. We are in Babylon. We are in the Western world with the mixed religions. No matter where you stay, whether you stay in China or America, it doesn't matter. It's the concept of the Western um, culture, the Hellenized culture. When the Greeks took over from the... Uh, Medes and the Persians who took over from Babylon uh, before Rome took over. They Hellenized. They, they, they made to worship their god Helen to all the people in um, the, the areas that they took over. And it is um, here that the people of Yahuwah still find themselves as fish, as sheep, from the house of Ephraim. We are still imprisoned. Until such days, Messiah comes back and he regathers and restores the kingdom. Um, so Nehemiah 12 verse 40. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks unto the house um, of God. Beautiful how these two companies, the house of Judah, the house of Ephraim, the one from the western side, the one from the eastern side, the one on the right side, the one on the left side, and how they encircled the, the city Jerusalem upon the walls that they have rebuilt and how they are coming back together 
to be one united nation. Not the United Nations of the world system, but the united restored kingdom of Yahuwah Elohim. And how beautiful does um, the book of Acts, I think this is Acts 15, where Yaakov, James, spoke to his brothers and he says, Main brothers, listen to me. Shimeon, Peter, has declared how Elohim first visited the nations to take out of them a people for his name. And the words of this prophets agree with this as it has been written. After this, I shall return and rebuild the tabernacle of David. You know, the house of David, the walls of Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, which has fallen down. And I shall rebuild its ruins and I shall set it up so that the remnant of mankind shall seek Yahuwah. Even all the nations on whom my name has been called, says Yahuwah, who is doing all of this. And therefore he has made this known from of old. From of the ancient times. You know, this God who says in Isaiah 46 verse 10, he knows the end from the beginning. This is his end plan. The same plan he has had since the beginning. And as we study the beginning of the book, we can also understand the restored kingdom at the end of the book. Beautiful picture in, um, in Ezra and Yemia. So the basic outline of the two books in which we see our own journey in the books of Ezra and Yemia that represents your and my journey as the remnant of the nations that has to come back to covenant. In um, Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 to 11, we see the preparation for the return of the remnant. And I want to invite you, go through the books of Ezra and Yemia and look for this whole journey, this basic outline in the lives of these two prophets. Go and look at the preparation for the return because we are now in the preparation period for coming out of Babylon and being restored back to the kingdom. Then we see Nehemiah's anguish, his love and his prayers for Israel to return to Jerusalem. Nehemiah 1 to chapter 2 verse 16. Then we have a look at the returning remnant. This is Ezra 2 verse 1 to 63. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 70 to chapter 3 verse 32. You see how the Bible explains to us after their pre uh, preparation, how Nehemiah really um, anguishes in prayer and in fasting and in tears and in standing in for this restoration to happen. Are we learning from Nehemiah? Are we also in, in fasting and prayer and in anguish before Yahuwah for his kingdom to be restored so that Messiah's kingdom can come and he can finally rule and reign alone with no mixed religions, no deception, no serpent um, for the thousand years um, of peace on the earth when he rules and reigns before the new Jerusalem comes down on the old Jerusalem as Revelation 20 and 21 explains. Then we have a look at Ezra chapter 2 verse 64 to 70. The gifts of the remnant for the restoration of the kingdom. And here we will have a look when we, when we get to that session. The gifts they received and how they, they utilized that for the rebuilding. The talents that you and I receive. The gifts that you and I have. Everything belongs to God. What of what he gives to us are we using for the restoration of his kingdom. Then we have a look at the altar that is set up in Ezra 3 verse 1 to 7, which symbolizes, of course, our repentance through the Lamb of God, through Yeshua. Not only did they um, come back to the promised land, but they had to go through repentance. Before you can put up the tabernacle, the first thing that you get when you look at the tabernacle blueprint is the altar of sacrifice. So that is the first stop that the returning remnant has to really see this whole procedure play out from the preparation of knowing where you are living now. It's not your home. Babylon or Egypt is not our home. Jerusalem is our home. The kingdom of God is where we are on our journey to. Just like Israel came out of Egypt in their journey in the wilderness, their lifelong journey, so that they could end up going back into the promised land that God gave to Abraham and his seed. And remember, Yahshua said, if we believe really in Munah, believe in him, we are the seed of Abraham. And then all the covenants with Abraham also belongs to us. 
and our home is not Babylon. Then we see that the temple foundations are laid, and this is Ezra 3 verse 8 to 13, and of course this symbolizes the restoration of the covenant. And the covenant is Yeshua, because Yeshua is the Torah that became flesh, and the, the root of the tree, or the foundation of the temple, or the cornerstone of the house is Yeshua. And if the foundations are laid correctly, then the, the walls can be rebuilt up to the point of completion. But then while we're busy with that, unfortunately, there will be adversaries that will seek to hinder the work of God. Ezra 4, Nehemiah 4, symbolizing our own adversaries and our own enemies in our own individual circumstances of family, friends, church, society. But then, of course, also the adversaries of God's people, you know, the New World Order, the beast system, the serpent kingdom, the principalities of darkness. And then, of course, these are all puppeteered by Satan, the adversary of Yahuwah himself. So our struggle while we are rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem is not exclusive to us alone. This is the ancient struggle that has been um, between God's enemy and God's people. Ultimately, Satan that wants to take over the throne and Jerusalem and the bride. He wants to take all those things over from God so he can receive the worship. That's his prideful nature. But then as we discussed um, all of these things, we see how the Passover, the Pesach, is restored. And that's why this specific message of Esra and Nehemiah was so significant for me during the Pesach season. Because with all this work and all these problems they had and all the um, amazing messianic prophetic re um, relevance of going through their uh, journey brings us to the point where those who come out of captivity, those who separate themselves from the, cap, uh, from, from the Babylonian world, they are those, the remnant, that keep the Passover. And this is what's so beautiful about our main verse that we are going to use through all the sessions, which is Ezra 6 verse 19 to 22, that talks about the Passover being restored for the remnant people of Yahuwah. And then we, we go further, God is with Ezra and God's people during all their efforts and their struggles. Ezra 7 to Ezra 8, as they go um, through their challenges with the adversaries and the hardship of rebuilding the ruins, because there was nothing left of Jerusalem's walls. And as they were working hard and struggling hard against the enemy while working, how God was with them and how he encouraged them and how he gave them the remembrance of his covenant and how they were restored in their passion for the rebuilding of the walls so that they were able to endure to the end. And that is Yeshua's message for us, the whole book of Revelation. Those who can endure to the end will see their reward. We will see how these people ended up um, Ezra 10, we'll get to that now, how they finally get their inheritance. But then before we finally get our inheritance, there is in Ezra 9 and Yemia 8, the warnings to the remnant. So that we, we don't become arrogant as we've come out of Babylon and we're on our journey and we, we're busy helping to rebuild this temple, these living stones that make out the house of God, which is the body of Yeshua with him being the foundation and the chief cornerstone, but also the head. All these pictures are just so beautiful. We must remember to, to stay humble, to, to have a look at the, the light that is guiding our path and make sure that we are continuing on the right path, not to lose track, not to go to the left or to the right. And therefore, the, it's important that God gave warnings to his remnant and that he gave them specific areas where they, were where they were still having a problem and where they were still taking a risk and they had to go through repentance for that as well. And then finally, each man receives his duty in the kingdom restoration. So Ezra 10 and Nehemiah 10, amazing how these two books are correlating there. Um, and each man receives his duty. Each one of us has um, 
a destiny. And each one of us has a part to play. That's why the New Testament explains so beautifully that the body is made up of many parts. And one part cannot say to the other part, I don't need you. As, and we'll get to that, as the tabernacle was built as well, everybody had work to do. Everybody had a part to play. Otherwise, the tabernacle would never have been rebuilt. It would never have been a, 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 a you know, one object made up of many parts. And that's the walls of Jerusalem. It's one wall, but it's made up, up of hundreds of thousands of stones. And each one of those stones, had to, you had to go out in the field and look for that stone. You had to bring it back to Jerusalem. And you had to build it carefully and with love and with skill. You had to rebuild it into, into the walls. And it's hard work. And it's sometimes lonely work. And it's difficult work, especially when there are adversaries, especially when half the people remained in comfortable Babylon and they didn't have to work. So sometimes we feel that the work is too much. But if it wasn't for each living stone building up the spiritual temple of God, where would you and I have been? Somebody built us into the wall and now we have to continue the work. So we, as modern day remnant, who returned to the covenant of God and repented of our Babylonian and Egyptian religion, we are being restored by the hand of Messiah himself. The hand of Messiah is, is building the walls of Jerusalem. And here you can have a look at um, Ezekiel 37, Jeremiah 3, Luke 13 verse 29, Mark 11 verse 17a, Zechariah 2, John 11 52. These are just a few of the verses that explains to us how this big job that we are seeing in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah is all done ultimately by the hand of Messiah. We have left Babylon and Egypt, spiritual prostitution, pagan traditions, and we are at the moment returning to the promised land, not the physical land. Eventually, yes, I do believe the physical land, absolutely. That's where Messiah will rule and reign from. The Bible says very clearly he lands with his feet, with his feet on the Mount of Olives. Um, Yahuwah himself will return with a new Jerusalem upon this land. The promised land has been since the Garden of Eden, the place where Yahuwah has called his name. And that is where we are returning to physically. But, but before the physical manifestation of the covenant, we have the uh, prophetic spiritual manifestation of the covenant. We are at the moment as the tribe of Ephraim, the lost ten tribes, the lost sheep, the prodigal son, the whoring wife. We are busy in the progress of returning one by one, two of a family, one of a city, God is taking us out of every tribe, nation and tongue from the four corners of the world and he's busy pulling us back. God himself is, is um, uh, pulling us to Yeshua, drawing us to Yeshua. And Yeshua is busy building the Father's temple with us. And we are part of that plan. So we as um, the remnant who left Babylon and, and spiritual Egypt, we are returning to the promised land, which means keeping the Torah, and obeying Yahuwah through the blood of Yeshua. And that's why Revelation talks about the remnant obeying the Torah and having the testimony of Yeshua over and over again. Read the book of Revelation. It is an ultimate manifestation of all the warnings and the curses, but also all the promises and the instructions for the end time remnant. We are slowly being restored with our older brother Judah. Make a clear distinction between Judaism and the house of Judah. I want to reiterate that so that you understand becoming a one restored nation with the house of Judah is ultimately important for God. Ya Judah, the house of Yehuda, um, if you take away the D, you have the house of Yahuwah. Ultimate restoration with them is of the utmost important. Romans 11 explains to us we cannot be arrogant. We as the wild branches cannot be arrogant against the Jews who are the natural branches, who stayed home like the older brother while the younger brother went out into the world and ended up in the big sty. So we are rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem 
and that represents the place where final restoration will happen in the hand of Messiah. Just look at Revelation 11, Ezra 3 verse 1, the Feast of Trumpets, Hebrews 11, 16, the whole of Psalm 113, John 14, 23, Matthew 23 verse 37. Just a few verses. There is a host of Old and New Testament scriptures that confirms the final restoration is God's bride, Jerusalem, at the physical Jerusalem where Abraham saw the, house, the, the city not built yet. That's what Hebrews 11 talks about. Beautiful. So the final restoration, very important. And this is why it is of the utmost important to understand the example God has given us in the books and the lives of Ezra. Ezra was a Torah scribe, Ezra 7 verse 6, and he was a priest, Ezra 7 verse 1 to 5. But we also um, learn from Nehemiah, who was a cup bearer, who served the king in exile. You can see that in Nehemiah 1 verse 1. He became an intercessor and a governor to the people of God. Nehemiah 1 5 to 11 and, and chapter 5 verse 14. How these two guys, a Torah scribe and a cup bearer, really gave everything up in Babylon. Both of them had very good positions, good, nice positions. You know, houses, high paid jobs. Um, they had friends, they had neighbors. Remember, they were probably some of them might have been born in Babylon because they were there for 70 years. They gave everything up the comfortable, established lifestyle, the routine they had, the um, what is unseen, the reputation they had. Um, they gave all that up. To go back to a city that was laying in ruins. Jerusalem was destroyed. But we see that in the lives of both these two men, for them it wasn't about their comfort. It wasn't about their lifestyle. It was about their God. Their God's house. Their God's temple. Their God's city. Their God's reputation. And their God's heart desire. Because the desire of Yahuwah, our Elohim, is for his children to come back home and to be restored with one another. And this is why it's so beautiful for us to understand the books of Ezra and Nehemiah.